Liz Allen, her son, little Normie Osborne, her chief of staff, Mason Banks, and the new head of Horizon Labs, Tiberius Stone, all stand by and watch the two Spider-Men throw insults back and forth. Otto, the superior Spider-Man, asks Miguel, what are you supposed to be? The blue symbiote? Another spider clone? Ugh, tell me this isn't cosplay. Miguel pushes back, telling Otto, I'm Spider-Man, from the future, from 2099. We've met. We had an adventure. Damn it, you may have changed your costume, but I can tell from your height, your build, your voice, it's you, Parker. Miguel is unaware that Otto Octavius has stolen the body of Peter Parker, and Otto has no intention of letting him find out. Silence and keep back, Otto shouts, backhanding Miguel and knocking the foe from the future to the floor. This is what I get for wiping Parker's memories. He thinks, I have no idea who this interloper is, other than a distraction, and there is work to be done. Tiberius Stone still has much to answer for. Otto sprints back to his original target, but Miguel is right behind him. Miguel pops his claws and slashes at Otto's back, claiming that Tiberius is under his protection. Otto jumps back to dodge the attack, and Miguel uses this opportunity to block off Tiberius. Whether Miguel likes it or not, Tiberius is his biological grandfather. If he dies today, or even takes a good kick to the crotch, Miguel is done for. He attempts one last time to reason with Otto. You really don't remember me, do you? Sorry, you must not have left a strong impression. Fine, Miguel says as he pops his claws. This time, I'll make sure to leave more of a mark on you. At that moment, Tyler Stone calls Miguel from the future. Spider-Man, wait! Who said that? Miguel asks, looking around. It's me, Tyler Stone, coming to you over your communicator from Alchemax back in 2099. That woman, she said Mr. Stone, then called him Tiberius. Son of a glitch, that's my father. As he was almost 90 years ago, he's the source of it all. The focal point of the temporal event that's erasing me from the time stream. Whatever you do, you have to keep him safe at all costs. Within Horizon Labs, Grady finishes telling Bella, Sajani, and Uatu his plan. Just gonna zip back in time a little bit. I'll be there half an hour. 50 minutes tops, Bella. You and Sajani can monitor me with this. He hands them a small device. Don't worry. I've done this kind of thing before with Spidey. Bella immediately recalls that Grady and Spidey nearly destroyed Manhattan that day. Sajani wonders aloud, Am I the only one concerned that a future Spider-Man came out of this thing. Grady ignores Sajani altogether. Look, he tells Bella, it'll be different this time. I fixed it. I'll be chronally out of sync with my surroundings. I won't be able to touch anything and no one will be able to see or hear me. Like a ghost? Bella gasps. Like me, apparently, Sajani pouts. Hello? A future Spider-Man? No one's freaked out by that. Outside, 
Otto pops his claws as well and dives in for an attack. I warned you, told you to stay out of my way. Now face my wrath. He swipes at Miguel's chest, but his claws cannot rip whatever fabric Miguel's suit is made of. Not a scratch. Impossible, he snarls. No, just a suit made of oomph material. It's standard where I come from. But for a low tech like you, it must seem cutting edge. Miguel turns on a dime and counters with his own attack, successfully ripping out pieces of Otto's suit. That hurt! Otto huffs. His mechanical appendages emerge. He points each one towards Miguel. Each of them is as sharp as broken glass. Otto decides to snatch up one of Liz Allen's company cars parked in the street. No one calls me low tech, he bellows as he prepares to crush Miguel with the machine. No one! Okay, Miguel thinks. Change of plans. Whatever's happened to Spider-Man, he's unhinged. Out for blood. And I'm next. Lucky for Miguel, getting back at the wall crawler has always been part of Tiberius Stone's plans. Tiberius produces a miniature spider jammer from under his sleeve and it sent out a wavelength that causes Otto's spider sense to go out of control. Otto loses his footing as well as his grip on the car and it begins to fall over to the side, creating a shadow over Liz Allen and her son Normie. Mason Banks grabs Liz and calls out for Normie, ordering him to get to safety. But Normie is petrified. He stands there, motionless, as almost two tons of metal prepares to crash on top of him. Mom! He cries out in terror. Miguel zips out a web line and tells Normie, Go limp! I got you, kid! yanking Normie into the air and away from danger. Liz runs in to comfort her son. Normie, are you hurt? Mr. Banks, call 911. You, other Spider-Man, what were you thinking? You could have snapped his neck. Don't worry, lady. That's a resilient little spud you got there. My enhanced vision tells me he's just fine. It also tells Miguel that Tiberius here, his grandfather, was the cause of all of this. With some kind of signal that set Spider-Man off and endangered the boy's life. Just like a stone. Anything to save their own skin. Miguel wonders if he's playing for the wrong side here. Otto stands to his feet. This isn't my fault. Is your son... Miss Allen, please understand I would never harm a child. I... Look, if you hadn't made a play at Horizon, went after my technology, none of this would have... Enough, Liz snaps. I have nothing more to say to you. Mr. Banks, I'm taking Normie to the ER. As for Horizon, I want you and Mr. Stone to immediately... Wait, where'd he go? Before a second can pass, Otto zips away as well. This is all unacceptable. There's another Spider-Man out there. One that has a way to weaponize my spider scent and turn it against me. And worse, he seems to know part of my secret that physically, I'm Peter Parker. This future Spider-Man is too dangerous to leave running around. He must be dealt with immediately. Otto makes the call to his Spiderlings on Spider Island. Another Spider-Man is on the loose in the city, in a blue uniform with red markings on the face, chest, and forearms. Locate him at all costs. 
one of the spiderlings speaks up. Uh, gotcha. So, stop looking for Hobgoblin and... No, you addle-brained imbecile. Do both. Find them, or I shall... Suddenly, Otto's phone rings. Ah, uh, I have to take this call. Stay there. Or else. Anna Maria! Hi, honey. What can I do for you? Hey, Slick. Actually, I was calling to see if I could do anything for you. What? I'm done with my work for class tomorrow, so I thought maybe I could come over and help you with your thesis. Uh... I'd appreciate that, uh, dear, but as you saw earlier, things are a little crazy today at Horizon, and unfortunately, all my equipment for my thesis is stored over there, in my lab. Excuse me, I, I have to go. Otto had totally forgotten. All of his work for his doctoral thesis has been done at Horizon using their resources. If Alan Chemical's takeover goes through, they will own all the rights to his next great invention. To the hell with Parker's old discoveries. This work is pure Otto Octavius level of genius. He'll be damned if another lays claim to it. He has to get back there and smuggle it out immediately. Everything else including all this future Spider-Man nonsense, can wait. In the air, Miguel web swings through the buildings with Tiberius in tow. He's just trying to buy some time away from Otto so he can think. That's when Tyler gives him another call from the future. Spider-Man, can you hear me? Whatever you're doing back in 2013, it's working. My personal timeline, my very existence, is stabilizing. Miguel responds, All I did was put some distance between your ancestor and this era's Spider-Man. Ancestor? The young Tiberius asks. Who are you talking to? Miguel ignores the question. He has to decompile this. If Miguel keeps Tiberius, his grandfather, safe. Everything in his time goes back to the way it was. A world with him, with Tyler Stone, and Alchemax, an all-powerful, evil megacorporation. How could Miguel let that happen when he has the power right now to stop it. Tiberius shuffles to his feet. A smug sneer spreads across his face. Wait, you said ancestor. You're a time traveler and you've gone out of your way to protect me. I'm going to do something big, won't I? Or my kids or my grandkids. They're going to grow up to be somebody important, won't they? I've worked it out. In this equation, you may be the spider, but I'm the butterfly. You're not gonna step on me. Just the opposite. Here, let me put my theory to the test. Tiberius steps backwards spreading his arms in a Christ-like fashion and closing his eyes as he steps closer to the ledge. He falls off the building and points himself towards the ground. Miguel leaps after him and easily catches Tiberius out of the air. I knew it! Tiberius cheers. Thanks for proving my point. Miguel webs Tiberius's mouth shut, telling him, you crazy, shocking lunatic. I've had enough of your games. Tyler Stone bellows out. What are you doing? Unhand him. That man's a stone, you downtown piece of trash. 
I said enough from both of you, Miguel snaps. Okay, let's see if I can hot load a different channel from 2099. Miguel tampers with his risk communicator until he is able to summon his personal AI from back home, Lila. Lila, Miguel says. I've DL'd your entire thought bank to my location in 2013. I need your help. Info dump me on everything you know about the historical connections between Tiberius Stone, Alchemax, and the 2013 megacorp called Horizon Labs. Elsewhere, in the recent past, at Horizon Labs, Grady watches as Peter Parker reveals for the first time, the Parker Particles, a hyperkinetic form of energy tied into the forces of universal expansion itself. Clean, affordable, near limitless power. The same day Peter's alpha energy experiment exploded. Grady gets a good view of what went wrong. Tiberius Stone and their boss, Max Modell, stand in the back of the room, overlooking the safety readings on a number of computers. With Michael Morbius now gone, there is an opening in Max's personal think tank. Max tells Tiberius that he's actually thinking about inviting Peter instead. This is motivation enough for Tiberius to sneakily disengage the safeties risking countless lives. Grady makes the call for the team to bring him back to the present day. Uatu is tentative at best about messing with time travel at all. Sajani just wishes Peter were around. He's more familiar with this equipment than they are. Suddenly, Peter goes walking by with his robot servant, the Living Brain. Careful, robot. Don't drop any of that. It's extremely valuable. I didn't say slow down. We have to remove all my things as fast as possible. Understood? Otto stomps out of the building to a parked van, followed closely by the robot, and they begin to load the equipment. Max Modell and Hector arrive just in time to ask Otto what he is doing. Horizon Labs is under federal investigation and the target of a hostile takeover. Legally, they can't remove anything from the premises. Peter, Max says, please trust us. We'll sort this out. And if you don't, Otto asks, Alan Chemical could lay claim to all of the technologies I've developed for Spider-Man as well as my latest breakthrough. I... I don't know what to make of this, son. You're not acting like the man I brought into my company. Don't you understand? If you do this, you could jeopardize everything I've... Otto's phone rings. One second, call. Have to take this. Otto walks away. I'm here, he says in his Bluetooth. What do you have for me? This is Spider Patrol 4, boss. We're on the Lower West Side. Have you located either of them? Uh, no, but then why are you calling me? We didn't have the hobgoblin you wanted, sir. We've spotted the other one, the original one. Quickly, Otto turns back to Max. I have to go. Robot, drop this off at Spider Island. What? Max asks, where could you possibly be off to that's more important than this? Can't say. That's it. Mr. Parker, if you leave now, I wouldn't bother coming back. Back in the alleyway, Miguel continues his conversation with Lila. She tells him that it was rumored, but never proven that Tiberius Stone's acts of sabotage led up to the destruction of Horizon Labs and the rise 
of Alchemax. And not just financial sabotage. He's the one that caused the actual destruction of Horizon on November 9th, 2013. What? Miguel asks. Lila, that's today! Back in the lab, Max and Hector walk in to find their employees all huddled around a time door and unstable chroniton particles bouncing around the room. He orders them to pull Grady back and shut down the door this instant before it's too late. In another alleyway, not far away, Otto struggles to put on his costume. I've lost my job. My discoveries might get stolen and I've barely worked on my thesis. And now my spider sense is unreliable. My spider bots are failing me. My minions are useless. And another hobgoblin shows up. What else could possibly go wrong? Otto's phone goes off again. What? It's Mary Jane. Peter? Finally! I've been trying to reach you for ages. Do you have any idea? Not now, woman! Otto snaps. I'll deal with you later. After I... Suddenly, Otto notices Miguel swinging by. He hangs up the phone. That other Spider-Man and Stone! Decisions. Decisions. In the lab, Grady walks out of the time door. Max demands once again that they shut the door down. Max, it is down, Grady tells him. But all the chronotons, they're not from the door. And they're not just chronotons. They're alpha energy. And it's all connected, man. This was always gonna happen. Miguel arrives in the lab and confirms what Grady is saying to be true. He's right. This is fate. Destiny. But I know how to change it. There's a lot to DL and there's literally not enough time. I'm from the future, 2099, and I have foreknowledge that this place is about to blow. But if you listen to me and do everything I say, we'll be able to make it out of this alive and in one. Out of nowhere, Otto arrives. He lands a sneak attack on Miguel, knocking him out. Ha! Huh, he snorts. This is what you get for meddling in my affairs. Hey guys, so if you made it to this part of the video, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. Uh, Superior Spider-Man is by far my favorite story of all time. So yeah, thanks for letting me share this with you. Uh, but remember, we have our DC TV weekly recaps every Wednesday around 1 p.m. Pacific time. And after that, the episodes will be uploaded separately on our second channel, The Overlook Media. Three words. So yeah. If you guys want to talk about TV, movies, or anything like that with us, go check out that channel. Until then, I hope everyone has a great rest of the night.